All right, it's Friday, week two. My week is over. It's just a little bit afternoon. I'm taking the afternoon off the rest of the day Friday so we can get some more stuff done. Um, this morning before I went to work and uh, a little bit last night, I worked on getting those cabinets all out of here. We took a few of them, as you saw, we took out intact. It was a little bit more finesse to take those out because we're selling them to friends. Uh, the ones that were on the other side, closer to the corner over here, um, had a little bit of water damage. Uh, so we just banged those out in uh, true demolition fashion. So we pretty much got an open uh, canvas here. Of course, these walls will come down. The closet walls will come down. That wall will stay, but we'll be opening up that window as like a pass-through or a serving area um, or just kind of a look-through into the galley kitchen that we'll have there. Um, we're probably going to move this wall back and make it one solid wall coming across between the galley kitchen and the front door. So we'll move the bedroom wall out a little bit this way, get rid of this wall, make it one nice wall that comes out. We're probably some type of barn sliding door on there. That's what we're talking about now. Um, going to put a wood burning stove over here, we think, with kind of a fireplace mantle, something, something decorative that Chris wants to do. And uh, we're trying to figure out where the TV and the furniture will go, but obviously we're way ahead of way ahead of planning on, on that right now. Um, so what I'm going to do now is, uh, while Chris is tinkering around with the water, the pressure washer, pressure washer was running fine and then it just stopped. Um, I did some diagnosis on it this morning. It's uh, getting fire, but it's not getting fuel. It's getting fuel all the way to the carburetor, um, so it's a carburetor issue. Chris loves tinkering around with carburetors uh, from her past hot rod days so she wanted to take the carburetor apart clean it out put it back together she's doing that right now so i'm gonna get started on the uh removing the flooring now in here this flooring doesn't have the water damage that the flooring in the back did so we're gonna try to save this flooring and move it back into my office uh, and install it in the office and out next to the shop lovely bad hair day and all she's working her magic on the carburetor Didn't take her long. Clean the carburetor up. And there you have it. Here in front of again. Uh, and the other thing here, I said I was gonna try to take up this flooring and save it. I'm still going to the rest of the way here. Um, but that first row there, they had installed it so tight up against the wall, super tight up against the wall. Um, and it's supposed to be a floating floor and be a little bit loose from the wall. So to get it, get those first boards out, I had to kind of damage a, a few of them. So we will uh, continue on with the rest of this flooring across here. The full pieces we will keep. Do the same in this room here and that should be plenty of flooring for the back office. So here we go, that's the, that's the plan anyway. Oh, 
So as you can see here, I've got a few obstacles. Um, <clears throat> one of the obstacles was the uh, <clears throat> one of the obstacles was the person that laid the floor really laid it tight to the walls. So getting that first that first layer out was pretty difficult. Um, actually had to bust a couple of uh, a couple rows of uh, boards to get to the clean boards so they can lift out. But once you do that, if you don't have a dog in the way like this, um, it's pretty easy. Um, you're gonna wanna do a row at a time. So as you notice, I cleared the whole row out across both these rooms so that we can go all the way across and save all these boards. Now get up, Presley. Come on, get up. So once you have a loose row here, you just kinda gently lift, and it's kinda good to put some pressure on the second row of boards here and that you can hear it kind of snap once it snaps a little bit it's coming out of that group so you got to be a little bit gentle because you don't want to really break that lip off and you just do this all the way down the line and you'll start seeing it start to separate right on the seam um, some people will stop here and try to pry those boards across um, i typically do the whole row Crack that seam and then separate the boards. We just keep working our way down, crack that seam a little bit. And the further we go, you'll start seeing a little bit more of this seam right here opening up. You're going to be doing this all day long, some nice flooring knee pads are in order. Get your paws off of there. This one's tricky. Most of them have been coming out a little bit easier than that. But as you can see, once you get the seams broken, it just starts coming, coming out. You want to make sure you don't damage those little edges. That's how it fits together. Tongue and groove.